Silver has been hot recently, hitting a 22-month high above $26 on May 4th. And things are also heating up on the mining side, with some major M&A activity and new production slated to come online. My guest today is Dan Dixon, CEO of Endeavor Silver, a mid-tier mining company that's right in the middle of the silver story, with new mine construction already underway and one of the largest undeveloped silver projects in the world in the pipeline. Dan, welcome to Kitco. Ah, thanks for having me. So we've got uh, a lot to discuss, multiple projects. Uh, you also announced your Q1 earnings just yesterday. Uh, but first, can you thumbnail Endeavor Silver for us? Yeah, uh, as you said it in your kind of intro, we're a mid-tier silver producer based in Mexico. We have two operating mines, the Guanas V mine and the Bolognitos mine. We've been operating Gu Guanas V for 17 years now and Bolognitos for 16 years, but we're uh, in, in coming into an important period of our 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 existence for developing the Terra Nera project, which is going to double our production and cut our cost profile in half. So very exciting time for us here at Endeavor and hopefully have more growth behind that. Absolutely. So so let's talk a little bit about Terra Nera. I know you've had some uh, big recent announcements about the project. What's the latest? Yeah, recently we announced the formal construction decision of Terra Nera. I mean, we spent $58 million in early works activity, which really goes into the initial capex of $230 million. So uh, a couple of weeks ago, we announced that decision when we put project loan financing in place. So we put a project loan finance in place for $120 million that ultimately makes the project fully funded. It's fully permanent. And we've got about 130 employees on the ground, over 150 contractors on the ground. So we're ready to hit the ground running and get this thing into production for the end of 2024. All right. And now where would you say you're at in the construction process? Obviously, there's a lot of people working, but uh, we know that uh, in mining uh, projects, can tend to fall a little behind and maybe a little over budget. So uh, where are you guys at? We're right at the start. Um, so we, when we announced uh, the construction, it's a 21 month build. Uh, we've actually got a lot of things done up front. So our permanent camp's nearly complete uh, where the plant site's going. We're in a topography of quite mountainous. Uh, so we cleared where the plant's going. Uh, we're starting to collar the portals. Uh, we've got about 30 different pieces of equipment already on site. So from a mobile mining fleet standpoint, uh, it's all there. Uh, the plant equipment's been ordered. It's to arrive this summer. So we have, like I say, we can hit the ground running, but it is going to be a 21-month period. I'd say maybe we're 10, 15% into the project thus far. Uh, so a long ways to go. Not a lot to report from a construction standpoint yet, but hopefully by kind of end of summer and into fall, we'll have uh, good news to report for our shareholders. All right. So around 21 months. Uh, so you've said this this project is a big part of achieving your goal of uh, nearly doubling production by 2025. So this would be coming online sometime in the middle of 2025? Uh, nope. We're actually targeting Q4 2024 for initial production, so full production for 2025. Uh, currently, we produce 9 million ounces of silver equivalents between Guanacaste and Bolognito. Uh, roughly 60% of that silver, 40% comes in, in the form of gold. Terranera similarly be 60% silver, 40% gold, and it'll produce over a 10-year mine life on average of 7 million ounces per year. All right. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit about Pitaria. This is uh, one of the largest undeveloped silver deposits in the world. Uh, how did you go about acquiring it, and, and why do you refer to it as a cornerstone asset for the company? Yeah, we picked up Pitheria uh, last year in July. We closed that deal. Uh, ultimately, it's one of the largest undeveloped silver deposits in the world. So um, it's a cornerstone asset because of the potential and what it can do for Endeavor. We picked it up for $70 million from SSR Mining, uh, $35 million in cash, $35 million in shares. And ultimately, for them, it was a rationalization of the portfolio. SSR used to be Silver Standard. I think over the last decade, it's transformed itself into a pretty reputable gold company, but they are a gold company. I think produce about 700,000 ounces of gold in a number of different jurisdictions. They were no longer really in Mexico other than the, the Pitaria project. And for them, uh, it made more sense in, in somebody else's hands, particularly a silver company. So it was fortunate enough that we won the, uh, what was a competitive bidding process and the $70 million, we think we'll be able to get that tenfold for our shareholders over time. 
there's a lot of work left to be done at Pit 3 We, like I say, we we took control of it in July of 2022. This year, we have a three and a half million dollar exploration program on it, really to advance and add it. That's pushing into a high grade zone at Pit 3 and then we want to drill from that high grade zone on some cross cuts, just to confirm some hypothesis to look at it from an underground standpoint, as opposed to what it was looked at in 2012 as an open pit. Uh, uh, mine. We're going to go back to what was originally thought there in 2008, 2009, an underground operation, which is what Endeavor knows. I mean, Guana City and Balneas underground operations. Terranera is an underground operation. We hope Pitria becomes our fourth operation that takes us to where we expect to be and hope to be uh, as a senior silver producer. All right. Now, uh, when you acquired Pitria uh, last year, you said it could uh, it could end up taking priority over advancing Paral, and uh, you decide after some more drilling and analysis. So what does the Pitaria project uh, look like today? Yeah, to be honest, not a lot's changed from when we acquired it in July. I mean, you alluded to Paral. It's another exploration project that we have also in Mexico. It's an old historical district. It's a lot smaller in scale than what Pitaria would be. For us, Pitaria is almost double the size of what Terranera would be, almost a 4,000 ton per day operation. Um, and it, we, I would say it's, it's ahead of Peral because of the scale and where we are in the silver market. Peral, um, is something that would run 1500 to 2000 tons per day, historically produced about 4 million ounces of silver. And I think we can have that come in our portfolio one day. Pit three is something that would run 3000 to 4,000 tons per day and produce about eight to 10 million ounces of silver. So a lot more leverage to Pitharia than Peral, and obviously there's a reason why we'd want to push on Pitharia compared to Peral. Uh, if we can sequence from Terranera right into Pitharia or right into Peral, depending on where the market is, I think it's a great story. It's just with higher silver prices, I think funding Pitharia will be easier uh, in, in that environment. But if we end up in an environment uh, with lower silver prices, I think we can push to Peral. And, Ultimately, it's to deliver on the growth story that we have at Endeavor here of going from 9 million ounces to 16 with Terranera. How do we get into that 20, 25 million ounce range? Well, Pit Thuria gets us there easily. And if it's not Pit Thuria, it could be Peral. All right. So you're very well established uh, in Mexico, multiple operations there. Can you tell me a little bit about what, what the advantages are of having so many operations in one jurisdiction, one regulatory environment, and presumably uh, efficiencies on, in terms of equipment and personnel as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you hit, hit the nail on the head there with efficiencies. I mean, we obviously know Mexico extremely well, and as you can build scale in any country, you develop technical expertise, local expertise, uh, regulation expertise. It just makes it a lot more efficient from a business standpoint. And, I kind of touched on it with uh, Guanas V and Balnitos being underground operations and developing Terranera as an underground operation. A lot of the social licenses we've developed in Balnitos and Guanas V, we've applied those same practices in Terranera and it, it helped from a permitting standpoint in getting support of the local communities. And uh, that's in today's world and today's mining world, that's a very important kind of process is making sure that we have that sustainability piece. and. Like I say, what we've always done at Guanacaste and Balneos is, has worked really well with in Terranera, and we expect that to work in Pitharia. And of course, if you can have everything centralized and share services, it helps reduce costs. And and again, share ideas and share technical expertise amongst different minds. It's a lot easier to be done when you're in one jurisdiction. Right. Well, that's uh, that's definitely the case in any industry, and. Uh never more than in mining for obvious reasons you've got so many regulatory hurdles and then you've got so it, it's so labor intensive so much time energy capital intensive so uh i guess that's uh, very reassuring for you and for the shareholders uh now we've also been seeing a lot of m a activity in silver recently uh pan american was part of a three-way deal with agnico and yamana also, Hecla has been buying mines and projects in the Yukon. So what does this kind of activity mean for a company like yours? Yeah, I mean, it, to be honest, it brings eyeballs into the space. Uh, silver is a very small world. There's probably six to seven primary silver producers out there. And as you probably know, about 800 million ounces of silver is produced globally per year. 30% of that comes from primary silver mines. And 
Uh, it makes it uh, difficult to grow sometimes to build that scale. Of course, Pan American picking up the amount of assets, probably picking up more gold than silver. Uh, I think Hecla's move into Northern Canada is for silver, but ultimately companies always like to grow. If you're not growing, uh, it, there's always that fear that you're getting smaller. And especially in the mining space where we're depleting our assets every year, you've got to find that next deposit to continue as a company uh, and grow for your shareholders. For us specifically, um, I think we've got a great pipeline, uh, having Terranera come online, hopefully for the end of 2024 and then moving into Petria or Peral, uh, makes us attractive, but we're excited to what, with what we're doing as a management group. We're excited to deliver for our shareholders over the next four to five years. Of course, from an M&A standpoint, we're always looking for development deposits, things that we can put in our portfolio to make our company better. Um, but for us, it's continue with our own business as is and, and try to deliver with what we have. All right. And can you give me a, a bit of a sense, just to close, uh, get a bit of a sense of, of what the catalyst might be over the next 12 months or two years? Obviously, you're, you're working on a, a two-year time frame uh, for some of these projects. But uh, for silver prices and for the company, what are some of the catalysts that, uh, that you're keeping an eye out for uh, in the near term? Yeah, for for us as a company, I mean, obviously, execution of Terranera is going to be paramount. I think for 2023, as we come in through the summer and get into the fall, getting news out where we're at from a construction standpoint will be imperative. Uh, I think as we get closer to the end of construction, you'll start to see uh, a change in our multiple and, and bringing Terranera online into commercial production definitely would be a big jumping point and then getting data out on pit three again as i said before we're kind of extending it at it down into a high grade zone we want to put some cross cuts in and drill from those cross cuts on some underground feeders that we, we expect to be high grade and ultimately putting that into an economic assessment and so in 2024 with pit three if we can deliver an economic assessment uh, obviously favorable we think that's a good reaction point for the company. So execution on Terra and Air and, and bringing news on Pit the Real will be important. Of course, at our existing operations, we started 2023 off very strong. Production's kind of ahead of guidance at this point. Uh, we don't revise guidance till mid-year, but we have exceeded guidance for the last two years and hopefully we can be in that same uh, trend for 2023. As far as the silver price, uh, the last couple of days have been difficult. Today, May, May 6th, we saw, or May 11th, we saw uh, silver drop a dollar twenty five today. So sometimes it's hard to get up on, up up for prices when you see days like today. But I think the long term trend is still intact. And silver is a very special metal in the fact there's the monetary aspect and there's the industrial components of it. And from an industrial standpoint, uh, we see that there's significant growth in photovoltaics, uh, in EVs, and the use of silver. And so the industrial component has been growing, but. Again, it's led by gold when it comes to monetary aspects and gold's holding strong here above $2,000 and ultimately silver will follow. It lags and it will overshoot it. And ultimately the ratio that we're at currently about 84 to one, that will tighten. I think the ratio over the last 35 years is closer to 65 to one. Um, my expectation is we tighten that ratio over the coming years. And ultimately I think Endeavor is a company's positioned extremely well for that. And Again, higher silver prices is my expectations, and I know I'm a CEO of a silver company, so take that for what it is, but the underlying fundamentals from a supply-demand standpoint for industrials is very compelling. What's happening from a monetary standpoint can be very compelling. I think the biggest catalyst for silver will be ultimately where we see what the feds go um, with U.S. interest rates over the next three to six months. Inflation, is it is it? hanging on here at five percent and they'll have to increase rates more to get down to their target of two maybe uh or do they take a pause and ultimately reverse course to get the economy going going into u.s elections in 2024 i think those are the big catalysts over the next six six to 18 months and and that will dictate it but again higher prices is what i expect and i think we're well positioned to take advantage of that 
Right. Well, absolutely. And, and I think you're also well positioned with, uh, in the short and in the medium term with, uh, Terranera and, uh, Pitaria. These are, these are projects that are staggered, uh, nicely along the timeline of the projections for massive demand from solar and, and the building out of, of clean energy infrastructure between now and 2030. You're, uh, you're kind of right in the sweet spot in terms of, um, in terms of, uh, the way these projects could line up. So that's, uh, that's got to be, uh, that's got to feel good. It does feel good. I mean, there's always things that we have to do in between it. We are paid to manage, uh, and execution over the next eight, six to 18 months can be critical, but, uh, we enjoy doing that. I think we've done a good job over the 17 years I've been with the company of delivering on what we've promised. And again, that's our goal. And if we can do that, I think that proves very well for our shareholders. Absolutely. Well, uh, thank you very much for sharing your time with us today, Dan. Thank you. Thanks for having me. And thank you for watching. I'm Ernest Hoffman for Kitco Mining. Don't forget to subscribe.